Episode 73 of The Beard Caster. My name is Scott Sakura, and I am The Beard Caster. <laughs> Welcome to a podcast all about beards, mustaches, and the bearded culture with all the fun stuff that goes along with it. It's about the facial hair lifestyle we live from our daily lives in the world around us and how we deal with life. So please join me, Scott, the Beardcaster, as I share the stories about these people and hear how they are using their facial hair to do great and fun things. Once again, welcome to... The Beardcaster Podcast. My name is Scott Sakura. You can find out more information about myself and the podcast by going to thebeardcaster.com. You can subscribe there. You can stream the show there. You can check out all the cool stuff. So if you get a chance, check it out. Today's episode is one of my uh, top 10 list of people that I wanted to get when I first started this podcast. I had made an initial list of people that I had always wanted to talk to, and it just so happened that I've met this person a few times, and they've been super awesome, Uh, just a great hang, just cool to talk to and everything. And over time, we got to know each other a little bit, so I figured I'd reach out to them, and they, by some, or not by some chance, they just so happened to be having a really cool competition in their neck of the woods, so I figured I'd re- reach out to him and talk to him. And this person is Nate Johnson. Now, everyone knows who Nate is. If you just do a search of beards pretty much on Google, I'm sure his picture comes up. He's, in my opinion, one of the most well known beardsmen out there. Or he's a chops guy, but everyone knows how I feel about chops guys. But uh, Nate's awesome, and we talk about a competition in Los Angeles called Beard Battle Los Angeles, and it's happening this weekend, and we talk about that. We talk about how we got involved in the whole bearding community. We talk about all the cool stuff that uh, he does. We talk about the Gentleman's Social Club of Los Angeles, and we talked. We just talked about oh, just stuff. I mean, it was really cool, like... Uh, it was, it's just really cool to talk to, to people in general about beard stuff, but then it's just cool to just, it's like chatting with a friend. So it's just, it was a really relaxed conversation. Nate's just an awesome guy. And, uh, I hope you really enjoy this conversation. So, but before we get into this, you need to pay attention to this because I'm going to be doing another super awesome giveaway. Uh, I got tons and tons of stuff that I'm going to be giving away on the next episode. So I need you all to go to thebeardcaster.com slash win to sign up to enter to win a really cool prize pack. Now you're just signing up for my mailing list, but everyone that's already signed up is still entered to win, but you need to sign up to be entered to win. So I'll do a random drawing and we'll send out this really cool pack. So the next episode, episode 74, there'll be the drawing for this really cool prize pack which will probably contain oils balms just a whole bunch of stuff i've accumulated so much stuff over the past few months and i need to get rid of it and i figured why not just give it to some lucky participant and i go so there you go go to thebeardcaster.com slash win to enter now without further ado let's get into this really awesome interview i did with nate and i'll talk to you on the backside. and here we go action Oh, crap. That's my afternoon beer. Yeah. Afternoon beer. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that or not, but oh, I heard it. <laughs> thought I'd try. <laughs> cracking the <laughs> cracking the first beer. So we'll just kick this off right now. And the beard caster is so excited to have this guest on. This has like been one of my bucket list guests that I've wanted to have since like day one. When I came up with the idea oh, of this dude, podcast, thank you, so much. you were like on like the top like five people I wanted to talk to. And not only were you like top five I wanted to talk to, but you were like one of the top five I always wanted to meet. And then I met you and you were way cooler than I thought you were going to be. And then, you oh, know, shit, man. thank you. Hey, sorry, I'll watch my language. Oh, no, you can swear all the all you want. We encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, so there we go. Yeah. So you were just like one of those guys that just you I, you saw all over social media you were doing cool stuff you were hanging out with cool people you just looked like a cool guy and it was like I got to meet that guy and I met you and every time I meet you you're just super awesome really laid back easy to talk to just easygoing guy 
And so now I get to talk to you. I get to talk to you about some cool stuff today. And I'd like to introduce Nate Johnson. And I I, thank you so much for uh, coming on today. You are very, very welcome. Um, It was great meeting you as well. And uh, I'm like when you hit me up about doing a podcast, I was like, no way. I can't believe he wants to interview me. So this is awesome. (laughs) Thank you. I really appreciate it. Oh, well, and the worst part was, is like, as I was like going through my Facebook feed this morning, I I saw the post about the competition next week and I'm like, shit. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I so hope that if I just message him right now, he'll be able to get together with me and we can talk about it, you know, shoot the shit about it. And he can tell me all about it. And like, I messaged you like, apologizing i'm like dude i'm so sorry that i'm just asking so last second and you were like oh no cool it's all cool and i'm like yeah this, that just totally goes fine. to show how awesome you are because you're like i'm like hopefully Thanks. i didn't take you away from anything today like you know hanging out with the dogs or drinking your beers and stuff like that but you can do that <laughs> while we're doing this that's what's so uh, cool about that's it that's it that's what i did i was saving my my beers for uh this conversation and after <laughs> awesome. so today it was extremely productive uh, i just moved into um a new home well it's not a new home but i moved it's new for me and so today was about organizing stuff as well as um promoting the competition uh through emails and twitter and instagram and all of that and uh, we've gotten some really, really good responses. I'm still learning Twitter. I don't quite get it. It's this weird Instagram, Facebook hybrid yeah. thing. Um, and But we've got some really, really good responses. Uh, NBC LA did an article on us and, and posted a bunch of our pictures on their uh, website. And um, I'll be doing an interview with K Rock next week, which I cannot believe I'm going to be on K Rock. Oh wow. my God, man! That, that's that's yeah, like K-Rock. classic, iconic radio station right there. Right? <laughs> they hit me up, and it's their their big morning show, Kevin and Bean, and uh, I'll I'll give you all those. Well, it'll be Thursday at 7:35 a.m. and it streams. I think if you go to KevinandBean.com or KRock.com. You'll be able to stream it live at 7:35 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. All right. Well, if I can get I like the, to say specific time, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, no, I was going to say if I get this episode out before then, you guys can check it out. If not, I'm sure they will have a recast or something. Do they? Oh um, yeah, there'll be archives. Yeah. where you can go and listen to it anytime. Um, but yeah, I'm still a little stunned that uh, I get to go to the K Rock Studios and and talk about my beard. How ridiculous is that? I know it's you so, know it's so weird how like culture has kind of changed over the past few years, and like how guys like you and MJ have really gotten a lot of really cool opportunities because of your beard and being involved in the community. So yeah, it's odd. I mean, it, it's now switched from um, you know bikers murders and rapists to uh, oh that's a cool guy yeah i'd like to have a beer with that guy and you know people aren't running across the street to get away from me yeah you know what I mean? they're running to come to you and talk to you right but i will say the uh auditions that i'm usually sent out on are like murderers rapists and <laughs> bikers <laughs> Oh shit. It's never like that nice guy with the beard that's just sitting in the corner quiet. <laughs> it's hey, never that. Maybe five but years whatever. from now. Five years from now. <laughs> yeah, eventually. It'll be eventually. It's kind of like how uh tattoos are no longer subversive. You know, they're no longer this um part of I don't know, uh, shady underground communities yeah. or you know. Uh so I think beards have kind of come that way too. And uh I don't know, a beard you can't exactly hide, you know, tattoos, you know, if as long as they're not, you know, below a short sleeve or, or whatever, you can usually kind of hide them and um, keep that to yourself or to, you know, whoever you want to show it to. But a beard is like wearing a giant spotlight on your face when you walk through the street and people just go, what is that? And a lot of times people will approach me like, oh, dude, you have a great beer, blah, blah, blah. And all I can think of in, in my head is, man, you should meet my friends because this is <laughs> nothing compared to a lot of these other guys. I know I, I wear it well for competitions and stuff, but yeah. when it's down, it's just, you know, it's just a beard uh, to me. And, and within the community, I think it's just a beard. But when you're outside of the community, people see it as something completely um unique yeah. or uh big or you know <clears throat> i get called boss a lot 
just walking down the street. Oh, well, you don't get called. Well, thank you. I'm too nice for that term, but thank you. (laughs) Oh, well, that's better than getting called ZZ Top. Man, I swear to God, like yesterday, I got that four times. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I still get that a lot. I'm glad that it's ZZ Top and not Duck Dynasty anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, You know. It just, I don't know, that used to drive me really, really crazy. But uh, my favorite story about getting called ZZ Top was um, this guy across the street from me yelled, ZZ Top, and then starts singing Free Falling by Tom Petty. And I'm like, dude, that's the wrong song. (laughs) Oh, that's classic. (laughs) <laughs> it was awesome. Like it was a moment of like, wait a second, is this happening? Oh my god, this is happening. This is so good. <laughs> oh man, what a yeah. That's yeah a, I'll take it easy top any day. Those guys are respectable, and they've had an incredible career, and they are known for their beards, um, including the drummer that doesn't have a beard, but his last name is Beard. Yeah, was it Frank Beard so, or something uh-huh. like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think it's cool that you know um, he was able to. Even within two bearded guys, he's still able to maintain his individuality, yet also be a, you know, a superstar along with them, simply because that's his last name. Well, he has a nice mustache, too, if I remember correctly. That's true. That's true. And they're from Texas, so that even makes them cooler on top of that, because everyone we know from Texas is awesome. <laughs> Dude, I tell you what, I love uh, the Texas guys a lot. I, I travel there a couple times a year, and it's literally like I never feel on when I'm with them. And uh, I feel like, oh, okay, cool. I can just relax. And, you know, if my beard's not looking great, nobody cares. If, uh, you know, if I don't want to have a beer, nobody cares. It's yeah. just everybody's chill. Um, I think if I turn down barbecue, they might, they might lynch me, but you know, whatever. (laughs) But it's like going to hang out with your extended family that you, they make you feel like you've known them their whole entire life. And it just, they do so cozy. They really do. You just want to hug them. Um, We've actually got one of them coming out to be a judge for our competition. Uh, Taylor Weldon from the Austin crew is going to be out here. Hashtag party. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) That dude, I oh mean, it, it, it's hard to keep up with him, but I try. I try. I know he's. Uh, I had him on the the program right before the world championship in Austin last year. I had him and uh, Paul Paul Hendricks, and uh, oh, those two guys were just. I love Paul. That dude is so rad. Yeah, the the two of them are just like amazing, and every time I see them, they're just like super awesome guys. Taylor's just funny as shit. I mean, they're both funny as shit, but. <laughs> Like, I just love seeing them, and then I love following all the stuff that Taylor's doing because he's always, like you I, like you say, you can't keep up with him. Like, he's just here doing that, here doing that. I'm like, next time. Yeah, like, the dude's, like, all everywhere. over the world posting amazing pictures. What was it the one I saw the other day? He was, like, laying in the back of a land cruiser looking out over a sunrise, and I can't remember where he was, but it was, like, a beautiful picture of, like, just the landscape, and I'm like, boy, that guy's got the life and the beard. And the cowboy hat, too. He really too. does. I have think, to say, like, being being in L.A., I don't get to experience that kind of stuff a lot. And so when I see my friends posting something like that, like it, it it's something a little special to me personally. Because, I mean, I'm a city boy. Mm-hmm. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Maybe I am because I paused before I said it. <laughs> but uh, he's doing all sorts of nature things. Did you see the one where, like, he's leaping over a canyon, basically? I might have. I don't remember. But it's I, yeah, in there. It's in his archive somewhere. It was within the last month or so. Like homeboys just like leaping from one giant rock to another. But it's like a huge like crevice or whatever. And uh, he, yeah, it's pretty rad. He does know how to party. We could all learn something from Taylor. Yes, we can, <laughs> and I have. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone could have. Everyone has a good Taylor story, but we'll save that for a later date. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's not podcast. Oh, it um, is podcast your, stuff. Well, no. actually, we should do. We should have Taylor and you, and uh, I don't know. We could have some some other Texas guy on and telling some good stories. Or next time all we're right. all together, we should do that. That would be a fun one. That's right, dude. You should do like a podcast, like uh, in the round kind of thing, where you have you know five or seven guys all just hanging out and 
talking about I'm, different stuff. I'm I don't know abs- what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm absolutely going to do that. And in fact, I'm going to try to do that at the Nationals in Richmond in September. So are you thinking awesome. about being there? Um, I am trying my hardest. Uh, right now, I have a, a regular 9 to 5 40 hour a week job, but, um, that really depends on me to be there. So I'm negotiating with my boss to be able to get there. And, and what'll end up happening is I'll leave, uh, Friday afternoon from work and then fly back Sunday night. And I, I won't really have to take any time off, I think. So, oh, all right. <clears throat> but yeah, it's, I don't know if I don't go, it's going to break my heart and I don't want to do that. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to break a lot of hearts. I mean, I love seeing my friends, but whenever there's a competition happening and I can't make it and I'm seeing all their photos and, and how much fun they're having, it hurts, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, dude, I hear you. There's been so many comps that have been going on over the past few weeks or past month or whatever, and it's like... I can't keep up with it. And then there, you know, I realized that there was like two big ones yesterday and I was at a small one yesterday. So there was, and, and it's like every weekend right now, there's like something big going on. There's always something. I will say that for the community, we've always got something going on. And that's one thing I tell people that eventually find out that I do beard competitions or, you know, they start asking questions and I'm like, look, I was like, I travel a lot, but not nearly as much as I could. Um, because there is at least one beard competition going on in the United States somewhere every Saturday night. Yeah. At least one. And they're like, really? It's that big of a thing? It's like, yes. Like, go to one. It'll change your life. You won't look back. It'll be great. Just trust me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's 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 dive into this a little bit. Let me let's talk about Sure, yeah. I'm sorry. We're like No, no. We're friending is, right now instead of is, like talking business. So no, let's talk there, business. but there is business is friendship. That's our that's it my really, business this, right here. In this community, absolutely. Yeah. It really is. So but for us being friends, I'd like to get everyone else up to speed and know I mean, I'd like to know a little bit more about you and I'm sure everyone else would. So let's talk about your history. Like where where, where and when did you like start growing your facial hair and like, why, why did you choose the style you chose? Like what inspired you? Who inspired you? You know, let's, let's, let's go back to the beginning of Nate Johnson and action. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I am a hairy dude. So I've literally been shaving every day since I was 12 and a half or 13. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, so I've messed around with different beard styles just for the sake of. Um, I haven't done the boy band uh, chin strap thing yet. Uh, I don't plan to. That's probably the only uh, facial hairstyle that I haven't had. But one of my favorites was um, Wolverine's sideburns, like Whoa. where they're short, but you know you can feather them back a little bit. Yeah. And. Uh, <clears throat> I found my first competition on Facebook. Uh, long story short, uh, I had just ended a um, long-term relationship, and uh, I was down, sad, you know, blah blah blah, all the usual stuff. He's scratching. All right, now we're fine. Hey, um, no problem. You know, all of that, and and I saw an ad on Facebook for a facial hair competition, and I was like, you know what? That's just funny enough and goofy enough for me to do, and that might make me feel better. What year do you say and, that was? Uh, about when? Oh, that was 2011. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, that was 2011, and um, I had a short, I would say two, two and a half inch, what would be considered business beard. And I didn't know anything about the bearding community. So I was like, Oh, well, enter full beard, you know? So I entered full beard and, um, I went to, um, (laughs) the meet and greet and I realized what full beard actually is. (laughs) (laughs) Full beard is not, you know, a short baby beard. The, what they were looking for was, you know, the, the 12 inches and over, and that wasn't me. So I knew I couldn't compete in that category. So I was like, oh, well, I'll just shave down my, uh, to my sideburns. I'll cut the middle out and, uh, I'll just do my, my sideburns. And so they let me switch categories. And then, um, surprisingly to me, I won. Oh, that's <clears throat> and a good way like, to start. Cool. I'm sorry. That's a good way to start. Yeah, it was, it was encouraging. It, it really was. Cause, cause again, I was, I was a little down and out and, you know, kind of looking for a new set of friends and stuff. And 
Um, but aside from winning first place, I, I, and I mean this with all my heart, I got to meet really, really cool people. And that's why I kept coming back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I started going to the meetings and I started kind of traveling and competing. And, um, I didn't know how to, excuse me. I didn't know how to, um, maintain my sideburns the way that they were without chopping them. And it looked like I chopped them. You know how people will just take the clippers to their beard or oh. whatever. And you can tell that it's like all weird and uneven. And, yeah. 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 Um, so they kept growing and then I kept winning and I was like, Oh, well I'll just maintain this. And then the way the feather thing came about was, um, <laughs> I was basically doing a beard soak one night, you know, and I was brushing uh, or I put a bunch of conditioners and oils and stuff in my beard to saturate it. And I was brushing it and it feathered back really nicely. And I was all, oh, huh. <laughs> well, maybe if I put hairspray on that, that would look really cool. And that's how that that's how that developed. Oh, wow. And uh, so they've they've stopped growing. They stopped growing at about three and a half years. I reached my terminal length, which part of me is grateful for because, Oh my God, it's in the way, like a pain in the ass all the time. Yeah. But at the same time, as a man, it's like, I wanted to grow more, you yeah. know, it's yeah. that kind of thing. Now I'm in the same boat. Like I feel like mine's just kind of stopped over the, like, in fact, someone had said the other day, like I had beat them in a competition in like 2012 or something. And then, mm -hmm. uh, they ended up winning. They constantly beat me now. And, uh, but his beard just keeps getting longer and he's like, man, yours like stopped. It's like, it's been exactly the same for like the past five years. And I'm like, yeah, it, I mean, I trim it every now and then just to get rid of the split ends and to make it fill out yeah. and look thicker, but maybe that's it. I mean, I got, maybe I just got to stop doing that, but it just seems that the more I trim it back, the better results I get out of it. So I can't complain other than the fact that I wish it was much longer, but I also agree you know, yeah, you just, you just, you're a man. You want it to keep going and getting bigger and better. It's like, how big can I go? How far can I go? Yeah, it's that. <laughs> I want to be amazing. But yeah. um, for practical reasons, I'm so glad it stopped where it did. Yeah. Oh, I I agree with you too. I mean, yeah, I've, there's many days at work where I can really get killed or something if it got caught in something. <laughs> oh, shit. If it was any longer. <laughs> Not, okay, so how did you get interested in the clubs and stuff like that? Now you obviously went to this competition, which was put on by a club. Now I'm sure you talked to a bunch of guys there, made some friends. How did you like, what club are you involved with? You know, how did you, who did you meet? Um, I got involved with, um, well, like I said, I, I when I went, you know, I, I met amazing people and <clears throat> a lot of those good people were with the LA, what was the LA club at the time, which was a uh, Los Angeles beard and mustache club. Um, so <laughs> story's going to get a little weird. Uh, not in a bad way. Well, yeah, actually, cause it was, it ended up being a negative experience. Ooh. Um, for a lot of people, uh, some of the people that were running it were not, friendly after a while and so that club uh died off basically because of that <clears throat> so um a couple friends and i started a new one which was the club previous to this one and uh we had a couple competitions there and we traveled together and we you know we had a really really good time but then uh one of my co-founders decided to be shady and you know, tried to cut me out of the club, stole a bunch of charity money, um, stuff like that. So I started my new one where I had all the reins and the uh, access to the uh, the club funds to make sure that they were going to where they needed to go. And uh, so now I run the uh, Gentlemen's Social Club of Los Angeles, which also includes ladies. And uh, here we are. We're uh, approaching our third competition. I'm really, really proud. Um we benefit the LA food bank, which is an amazing charity. So, um, yeah. Now, how, That's did, how, that happened. Well, how did you get hooked up with the LA food bank now? And is that who you guys pretty much anytime you do an event, you do it for? Uh, yeah, that is who we do it for when we, uh, have competitions and the way we got hooked up with it was, um, 
So when I first started this club, I mean, I, I only had a, a vision of everybody being friendly, everybody having a voice and uh, everybody, you know, here for one cause and having a good time. And that wasn't happening in previous clubs for some reason. Uh, people that think they're in power get this elitist attitude and they're not very friendly. They're not open to new ideas. Um, they, I don't know, let's say that someone might win a lot. Uh, they suddenly become envious of that and try to cut them out of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, the way I did this was I, I had core people from those previous clubs that kind of got shit on before, not kind of flat out got shit on before. So I was like, guys, this is what we want. This is what I want to do. I want you to be part of it. And, um, what are your ideas for what charities, you know? So we made a list of charities and then we voted on which one, uh, we think would <clears throat> benefit. And I wanted to do something local, something Los Angeles, uh, we originally thought about doing the wounded warriors thing, and then they were dealing with some um, embezzlement or tax evasion issues, something like that, something shady. And because we have, you know, there's a lot of vets within the community, as you know. Yeah. And I thought that that would be a great thing. And then I decided to centralize it and make it basically just uh, Los Angeles based charities. And the food bank really appealed to us because we can volunteer once a month and sort food. <clears throat> for, um, you know, families that are in need and it's not necessarily for homeless people. It's just people that are down on their luck or, you know, they need to pay rent or eat. So they obviously need to keep the roof over their head. So they pay rent and then they don't eat. Yeah. And, um, so <clears throat> we decided to, uh, make our competition about raising money for them. And as well as a food drive. So um, everybody brings canned foods and with the canned food, then you get like a free raffle ticket or something like that to put towards a raffle prize that you might want to win. Uh, for every dollar that we raise that feeds for that's four meals for four people. So um, I think that's pretty incredible, actually. Yeah, that's 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 always a cool, a cool way to go, especially when you're doing a. Uh like for a food bank or something when I back in the day uh, when I used to be in a band we used to do like a fundraiser every Christmas for the same thing it was the Akron um, Akron Ohio food bank and we would do the same thing you know the money that came in at the door we would donate to them and then anyone that brought in a can of food would get like a ticket to the raffle and stuff like that so and I still remember the last time we did that loading up a a truck to the brim full of like canned food and stuff like that. And I, I'd felt so satisfied because it was like, we'd been doing, are you there Scott? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Oh, there you Hi. How are you? <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was just really, I lost you for a brief second. I, I didn't lose you. I'm, you're always in my heart. Okay. Always remember that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just how, how good it felt to like, raise all that money and, you know, do get, get all the canned food for the people, you know, it just, to do things like that just makes whatever you're doing worthwhile and it just makes it, it's like the icing on the cake. So it's really cool. And I'm glad that you found a charity that you can continuously work for and that you guys can do things with like at least once a month, but throughout the year and for the past few years. I mean, that's, that's very admirable. Thank you. Um, you said for Christmas, uh, we also have like a little charity drive for Christmas. We, um, every year we throw a star Wars holiday party. <sighs> we don't watch the holiday special because it's horrible. <laughs> oh, come on. The <laughs> well, we put on one of the star Wars episodes, but as far as watching the special, it just, it is such a boner killer dude. Like nobody even wants to have a beer while they're watching. They're just like, what is this crap? I know. But, um, I know. But I tried it the first year thinking, you know, like as an intro to the rest of the night, and people started revolting. They're like, dude, no, turn it off now. But there are a couple um, really good things that came out of that Christmas special or the holiday special. I mean, like that, what? That, the introduction of Boba Fett. <laughs> That's true, actually. That I mean, is true. Even though in the cartoon that they showed during that, he was more of, he was playing more of a good guy than he was a bad guy, which. I know, of course, it changed, but that was the introduction of Boba Fett. That's true. All right. And we All right. Got, I'll, I'll let it go. And we got to see <laughs> Malabaka and Chewbacca make out, which is always hot watching two Wookiees kiss. 
<laughs> it sounds like late nights at a beard competition after too many beers have been had. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. So, but yeah, so yeah, so okay, so you guys do, do you guys dress up and like what do you guys do? Um, some people dress up, uh, um, you know, not everybody does, but you know, they're wear like a Star Wars shirt or something like that. I fix my chops into Leia buns because, yeah, yeah, why and not? uh. And, uh, you know, I put on, um, you know, a white hoodie and I have a bandana on to kind of, you know, man it up a little bit. So I go by like Cholea. <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about, Leia? <laughs> Cholea. And, um, but it's, it's also a toy drive for Toys for Tots. So uh, everybody that comes drops off a couple toys or whatever. And then we, uh, the bar gives us drink specials for the night. Just so we drink more and, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then, um, I, I drop the toys off the next day at, um, with the Marines. Awesome. Toys for Tots is another great charity to do things for. It really for. is. So it's, you know, it, they, and we did, we did one event this year or well, we do, we do a Toys for Tots toy drive too around Christmas and we were with the Marines and they were we were talking to them and they were really down in the dumps because they're like, yeah, our quota was down like really bad this year. He's like, no one was donating toys and we were going to be like really low. And there were going to be a lot of families that weren't going to get things for Christmas. And we had kind of called last second and arranged them to come and pick up toys. And we filled up like four huge boxes for them and they were very thankful. Dude, that's great. I know it was another one of those satisfying moments of like helping the community out and just being like, you know, I'm so glad that the people in the community, the bearding community are like so giving and so thoughtful and they go out of their way to do these great things for, you know, the people that need stuff. I mean, I never would have thought when I started in this whole thing of even growing a beard that this is how it was going to end up. And it just makes me so happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's I totally, sp totally get it. Yeah. I had no idea that beards could do that yeah you know? yeah that's exactly it, it, it sounds ridiculous when you tell it to people and even when you put it in black and white on paper but then when you experience it it's like oh my god yeah of course this is yes this makes total sense so we've talked about a lot of like really cool accomplishments that you know we've had with our beards and the the moments of like charity work that we do and the great things that we do for other people but let's talk about a accomplishment or some really cool experience that you've got to have because of your beard? Like what's like one of the coolest things that you've got mm. to, you know, like either it could be like, what's your, what's your biggest win you've ever had? What's your, you know, I know you've been on TV multiple times, uh, mm -hmm. but like, like what, what's one moment that really stands out to you as like, a really awesome mm. moment because of your beard. Um, hmm. I mean, I know sitting next to Steve Harvey is probably a hard on a, a minute, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was honestly like that. I didn't, when that happened, I was just kind of like, okay, we're doing this. Yay. All right. We're here. And I didn't realize, um, and this is going to sound ridiculous, but I didn't realize how widespread that was going to go. Mm -hmm. um, and I was getting hit up by strangers after that. I've literally had people approach me on the street, even uh, recognizing me, even though um, my chops aren't fixed up the way that they were on the show. They literally go, oh, you were on Steve Harvey, right? And then they want to get a selfie. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, what is going <laughs> on? Um, it's and. Strangely enough, as much as it seems like, you know, I love attention and all of that, I'm actually a huge introvert. This this beard has also become a bit of a mask, I guess, in a way, um, so that, you know, I can actually talk to people and, and feel kind of protected, but at the same time myself, if that makes any sense. Oh, I think I'm exactly so, the same way. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a weird um, dichotomy, right, of... of Yes, I know that this gets attention, but oh my God, please stop looking at me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes, yes, that is exactly, you hit it right on the head, like exactly. <laughs> Let's make it more so flamboyant I, I so more people look and, but not look, you know. <laughs> right, and I mean, I, I, you know, I like to look nice when I dress up and stuff uh, for my beard. I, honestly, I wish that I had occasion to wear 
you know, my fur coats and my gold every day, but um, I don't want to get mugged or be ridiculous. But uh, wait, I do want to be ridiculous. <laughs> I know <laughs> you, you have an amazing style. I mean, just just let alone the, the way you style your beard, but from your hats to your chains to your clothes to your shoes, I mean, you are to the nines. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. <laughs> now, wow, was that a result of growing the beard too? Like the whole, the whole persona, the outfit, and everything, or was that something you kind of were always into? Um, that stuff is like my my gold chains and bracelets and rings and stuff. That's literally since I was a little kid. Uh, I, I recently, a few months ago, found my <laughs> found my first gold bracelet, which is from the Mister T. Uh, collection i oh, swear to god wow <laughs> yeah he he um mr t is a huge influence just to me as a, you know when i was a kid like that was oh my god you're awesome yeah um but along with you know growing up uh on 80s mtv which introduced yo mtv raps and um you know, like run dmc like they had the big you know dookie chains and stuff and all i could think is oh my god one day I'm going to have one and I'm going to wear it, <laughs> you know, like an idiot. Yeah. But then here I am, you know, 30 something years later, that's exactly what I do. Um, the movie break in was a huge influence on me as a kid as well. So, um, along with, uh, you know, biting some of that style, I want to say biting some of that style. It's not something I go out of my way for. It's just how I see it and how I saw myself growing up, you yeah. know? Oh yeah. But, um, but it's interesting. I've actually kind of become friends with Ozone, and I, I take his dance classes every now and then for popping and locking. What about Turbo? Come on, whatever happened to him? In LA. Huh? You leave Turbo in the dust. What, what's going on, man? Oh. <laughs> Turbo, you know, I've researched him. He's got a documentary coming out. Uh, Boogaloo Shrimp is his, is his pop and lock name. Oh. His street name, I guess. Um, and, wow. uh, it's funny. Uh, Ozone gave me, I say Ozone. Shabadoo is actually what his real name is. He gave me my uh, my street name, which is Sir Chops a Lock. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now that's cool to get now to get a nickname from like that, like yeah. an iconic person. Like you were growing up watching that, because I, I watched that movie too, and Breaking Two, The Electric Boogaloo. Like I loved those two movies when I was little, and mm-hmm. like just to imagine, like. Now you sit down and you get to hang out with the person that's in that movie and they give you a nickname. How much cooler can that be? <laughs> Dude, it was one of those moments of like, oh my God, I have to rein in like everything. I want to explode right now and I can't because <laughs> I have to be a human being. But oh, yeah, wow. that's that's what that felt like. It was, um, yeah, because, you know, I was I watched those movies when I was like seven and eight years old. And, well, there um, there you go. That could be one of your biggest accomplishments right there. I mean, getting a nickname from one of the guys from one of your favorite movies from when you were a little kid. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> rad. That's pretty rad. I would say, yeah, that is pretty rad. That was a really, that was a cool moment. Um, but uh, let's see, other cool moments. Uh, honestly, um, I don't put it, and this is going to sound ridiculous and like, I don't appreciate what I've won and stuff, but I don't necessarily put a lot of stock into the trophies and titles that I've won. Uh, Cause again, like I was saying before, to me, it really is all about hanging out with the cool people and everything. And uh, you know, recently in SAC in Sacramento, um, I came in second, but I will be honest. I wanted that second place trophy cause it was so cool. Like when they revealed the trophies, I was like, <laughs> Oh my God, I want second place. You know, and yeah. then it was by like literally a one hundredth of a point that I got second place, and I was over the moon happy. You have no idea. Some of the side guys came up to me, they're like, "Nate, oh my god, I'm sorry. I know you're used to getting first. I'm like, dude, I don't care. No, I get this awesome trophy. Mm-hmm. And um, so to me, that was really cool. But um, I will say, I, I feel like my biggest one was the literal honor of winning worlds in Austin, and my friends put on that show. And uh, I got to take first place in my category for my friend's show. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that means something to me on a level beyond just it being a trophy. Yeah. So I liked that a lot. And then what other things do beards get me? Let's see. Uh, I rarely pay for my own beer. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that when one, I go out, there's that, usually some dude that'll walk around, dude, I gotta buy you a beer. That beer is awesome. Let's go. And I'm like, all right, now, let's rack it up. Now that reminds me of a, a funny story of like back in like the <clears throat> early 2000s, like we're, we're talking like well over like 15 years ago. Um, mm-hmm. when I had a long beard and it was the same thing back then, people would always come up to me and be like, you know, Hey, how long, how long is it? How long have you been growing that? And it would just get annoying after a while. So I used to make a fun game out of it where I'd be like, all right, I'm going to write down on a piece of paper, fold it in half, and if you can guess within two years, I'll buy your drinks for you. And I never once ever had to buy a beer for myself after that point. So because awesome. no one no one could ever guess. And they were always off by, there was, oh, 12 years, 13 years. I'm like, nope, this is two uh-huh. years right there. And never ever had to buy a drink again after that point. And so... Maybe I should start playing that game because I get asked that a lot. You know, like, how long did it take you to grow that? And I'm like, oh, three and a half years. Oh, my God. I figured it was like 15 years. Yeah. Dude, it's such an easy game because all you got to do is you go, all right, I'm going to play a game with you. And you just, you write it down before you even tell them what the game is so they know they're not, you're not going to mess with them. So, right. And then, and then, you know, and then be like, if you can guess it and if you get it within like a month, I'll buy a shot and a beer for you. (laughs) So that's awesome. And you I guarantee you'll never have to buy a drink again. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and the other fun one too is I remember I used to travel a lot too. And every time I'd fly Delta, the for some odd reason, I'd always have this one guy that was at on the flights, he was a stewardess or whatever you call him, and he would give me free drink tickets all the time. He's like, dude, your beard's so great. Here, have some extra drinks. And that's I st- awesome. <laughs> so if anyone's flying <laughs> Delta, I still have a bunch of free drink tickets. Just let just hit me up and I'll give them to you. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I, that, I guess it'd be like one of the one of the things that our beards really do get us is a lot of uh, free drinks. <laughs> yes, free drinks and um, weird midnight Facebook messages. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, but there. whatever. We don't have to go into that. Oh yeah. So uh, now let's talk a little bit about what you do for a living because I know you have a quite interesting job. Um, well, I've switched industries, but oh. it's not, um, I, I used to work production for animation. Oh, okay. And, um, and I worked for, um, Nickelodeon for Hasbro for DreamWorks. Uh, and most recently it was Warner brothers and, um, I worked on their direct to video, uh, PG 13 rated R, uh, animated titles for like Superman, Batman, things like that. And that was really cool. I have to say that was actually, a, a, I don't want to say it was an achievement or accomplishment, but um, they drew me as a character in one of the Adam West Batman cartoons that they did. Now that's, I remember when you posted that and I was like, wow, that is like one of the coolest things ever had to be. It, it was, it was pretty neat. I didn't know what was happening. And um, I, again, I was the production assistant. So, Every all of the art, you know, I would see coming and going and, you know, get approved or, you know, and move it on to the next stage. And one day, one of the character artists comes over to me in my cube and says, Nate, stand still. And he took a photo of me. And I'm like, dude, you, that was really weird. Why don't you, you know, yeah. why are you taking photos of me at work? OK, well, he must have somebody that he's showing a big beard to because I've had that happen before where people are like, oh, my God, my brother has a big beard. I have to take a photo of you. Blah, blah, blah. And actually, my rule for photos is you have to be in it with me. I can't just be standing there looking like a dick. Yeah. That's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> but um, anyway, about three weeks later, I'm, you know, getting artwork together to send to my boss uh, for approval and stuff. And then I saw the drawing. I was like, what was that? That's pretty cool. OK, well, they're never going to let this go through. You know, I didn't worry about it, but I, I kept a copy of it for myself, the original drawing, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, sure enough, it did go through, and I'm just sitting there like, holy shit, that's my face! I don't know, because we screened it, and I'm like, oh my god, my face is on a 20 foot screen! Oh my god, get it off, get it off, get it off! <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that was that was kind of cool, and and I'm forever in their archives, at, you know, as a sideburned prison. Um, <laughs> there you inmate. go, prison inmate. There you go, <laughs> See? Type, typecast. There it is rapists, prisoners, <laughs> bikers, murderers, 
Oh, geez. So well, hopefully Lifetime will call me up soon to be a murderer in one of their Christmas specials or something like that that they run in July, you know. Or no, that's Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's one of one of them. So, so what do you do now? One then? Of them. What, what, what did you switch to now then? Oh, well, now um, I am basically doing uh, processing payroll for those companies that I was working for before. Oh, okay. Um, and it's, you know, it's a numbers job and it's great. But the thing is, is it's uh, literally 830 to 530 every day and I can shut it off when I leave. Yeah. Because uh, before I was working, you know, anywhere between 12 to 17 hour days. Yeah. And then I couldn't really sleep because I was so worried about all of these things pending. But that also meant that I couldn't work on my side projects, which I want to focus on. I do um, a lot of writing and uh, I've got some, you know, script writing and some book writing as well as some blogging that will be coming out within the next the next few months for sure for the blogging stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, the other things are still in process, but anyway, basically I took the job to give myself a break so that I could work on stuff for myself instead of stress out about things for other people's projects and never get anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, your sanity is worth everything at times. So, and honestly, I didn't realize how insane it was until I stepped away. But then I also didn't realize how insanely addicted I was to the stress. Hmm. You know, like it's, uh, it's Sunday evening here now. And all I can think is, oh, my God, when I'm done with this interview, I can just chill for the night. I don't have to prepare for tomorrow. I don't have to, you know, make phone calls and get worried about stuff like oh my God, wow, I have a whole evening to myself. This is amazing. Like, this yeah. is kind of a new life for me. Oh, that um, is but well, yeah, I was addicted to that stress. And I, I, I like kicking ass, but I don't like going, oh my God, is this going to work? Oh, you know. Oh. I hope yeah. that makes sense. No, no, absolutely. Like, I, you know, it's it's nice to have a little bit of stress to motivate you in your life, but it's also nice to not have that stress to kind of like retain you from doing just normal things to relax and diffuse and right. move on. So, but yeah, I mean, and, and even being like <clears throat> in a beard club and putting on like events like that, you know, that, that, that can tend to be a lot, very stressful too when you're putting together a bigger event and uh, you know, you have to deal with a lot of things with that. And hopefully you have a lot of club members that help you out with that. So let's talk about. Oh, absolutely. I have an amazing, an amazing, amazing team of uh, people. I wouldn't say that they're behind me. They're with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like saying that they're behind me, that, that, that discredits them for um, first of all, how much I personally value them um and their work but also it discredits them in front of other people so uh i would rather say they're with me and not behind me as far as that goes but yeah like right now is <laughs> since our competition is less than a week away you know it's major major stress but this again this is something i'm proud to stress over something that is my project as opposed to stressing for something that is someone else's project like warner brothers you know what i mean yeah I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Warner. I would, I would love to work with them again someday. Um, and all of that, like th that was not a negative experience by any means, but, um, I just realized, you know what, if I'm ever going to get anything done personally so that I have people stressing out for me on my projects, <laughs> um, <laughs> then I better, you know, uh, take a step back, you know, find a job where I can breathe and shut it off at five thirty, and then get on with my night. You know, my the next you know six to seven hours of my night kicking yeah. ass on whatever I need to do to make things happen. Okay, so let's talk about the competition that's going on next weekend. Tell me about it, and yes, sir. let's let's go over the details on this. Well, uh, this is uh, we officially sorry my corners. We officially call it Beard Battle LA. And so this is Beard Battle LA Part 3. It's our third one. Uh, I decided to give it a movie title because it makes it sound like, dun, 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 what's coming? Beard Battle LA Part 1, Part 2, Part 3. Um, and honestly, <laughs> I wish that I had been nerdy enough to call it Part 3B in the beginning. But what does that really 
mean when you're talking about a beard competition? I feel like people would have asked a bunch of questions like, what do you mean 3D? Well, their beard is live, so they're three-dimensional. Yeah, you got to um, be there. Yeah, you have to be there to see it. Um, you give out so 3D, this year we you could, it. could have done I'm 3D sorry. glasses for everyone, too. Oh, my God. Now I regret this, dude. Uh, now, I maybe you can, next my- year you can do 3D. <laughs> kind of like how uh, Piranha did Piranha 3D, and then it was 3 Double D <laughs> for oh, the sequel. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> three, du- there you go, there you go. That next year, Three Double D. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so yeah, this is our third one with this club, uh, the Gentleman Social Club of Los Angeles, and, and again, I have a, a great group of people who are with me, um, just as enthusiastic putting this on. And um, let's see. Oh, every year we choose a theme uh, just to kind of give, you know, a distinction between previous year's competitions and and also to kind of set us aside from other clubs and stuff that don't choose themes and whatever. But I also like to know, um, I don't want to say how to dress because you're not required to wear a costume, but it's fun to have a theme and then you kind of achieve that goal to get there and show up in theme, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, our first one was a Mad Max theme and dude, people came with like uh, spiked uh, baseball bats and giant nails sticking out of uh, football shoulder pads. And I mean, it was awesome. And then uh, our second one was an all-out 80s party. So we had a prop replica DeLorean uh, down front so everybody could take photos with it. And um, Long Duck Dong from 16 Candles was our celebrity judge. That's right. That's right. I remember that. That was so cool. He was um, fascinated with everything going on. He was literally like, what? What? (laughs) (laughs) But uh, he was such a sweet guy, and um, and you know he he did it for free. Actually, uh, we didn't have to pay anything, and I kept going. Look, do you need an appearance fee? Like, what's going on? Like, what is the deal? He's like, no, 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 I'll just come. We'll hang out. And I'm like, oh my god, wow. like that was really really cool. Yeah, it makes him even cooler. Wow. It totally, totally. I mean, all I could think is like. <laughs> There's a photo of him standing next to him, in, you know, in front of the DeLorean, and I'm like, in my Michael Jackson beat it jacket. And all I could think is, oh, my God, I cannot get more nerdy than I am right now, and this is the most amazing moment. It sounds <laughs> you like you have a lot of those. What? Michael uh, Jackson jackets? No. N- well, no. Like, those oh. m- meeting your childhood, like, those guys in the movies that you grew up watching, and then now you get to meet them, and, like, you nerd out with them, like... Yeah, it's, it's I've been fortunate where it's happened uh, enough um, or a couple times, you know, I, there's not really new celebrities that I would freak out over. I mean, I, you know, I've seen Julia Roberts and Brad Pitt, you know, uh, break checked me one day and that pissed me off. I didn't realize it was him. And I went to give him the finger and, and as I passed him, and I was like, oh, shit, that's Brad Pitt. Nah, <laughs> never mind. Um <laughs> But the ones that I nerd out over are, you know, my childhood superheroes okay. and and uh, Long Duck Dong or Getty Watanabe is his real name is in one of my favorite all time movies. It's probably it's definitely in my top 20, but probably in my top 10. I mean, mm-hmm. 16 Candles is just unbelievable, you know, 80s amazingness all the way around. And, you know, as told by um, 80s God himself, John Hughes, you know. Um, so getting to meet him was just a little bit of like, whoa, that was just amazing. But, um, so this year, sorry, back to the competition stuff, I'll quit going on and on about eighties movies. Hey, that's all right, man. Um, We're here to talk about everything. Okay. Wherever the conversation Um, leads. (laughs) I'm sorry. Wherever the conversation leads. All right. I'm down to that. I don't really, you know, this is, this is my podcast. I can do whatever the fuck I want. So. Awesome. You know, it's nice to be the boss, right? Yeah, it is. It is. I, I don't. I don't have to stress too much about this one, but so. But all right. So, what's this year's theme? So this year's theme is um, circus freak show, like a vintage circus freak show Ooh. from you know the vaudevillian days, I guess. And uh, I'm really, really excited about it. Uh, we've got some bearded ladies coming. Um, I'm in negotiations with a couple of their uh, quote unquote freaks to be there um wolf boy is the one that um i'm really trying to get wolf boy there because 
his whole face is a beard and he belongs and yes. you know, everybody would love him. And, um, I, I want him to see that. I think it would be incredible. So I've actually been trying for the past few years to get in there and, uh, he hasn't been able to do it, but because on Saturdays, the Venice freak show where he used to work, um, they were in session and that's where he makes his money, mm -hmm. but they've since shut down. So, I'm hoping he'll be able to come hang out with us and, uh, you know, take photos with everyone and, and just be part of the hairy craziness because that is, you know, it, it could be a social home for him where he doesn't have to feel like a quote unquote freak or whatever. Cause he's bearded. We love that. So great. You know? Yeah. And I, I mean, and speaking on that fact, there's one of your judges, in fact, who I met at worlds this past year, who, I spoke with for a, a long time and they brought up the fact of how their life really changed once they met the bearding community and how they felt more accepted. You're talking about Rose, huh? I'm talking about Rose. Yep. I love Rose. She is, oh my God, she's so great. And, uh, I just don't know how uh, anyone can I, be mean to her. Like how I don't how, either. Like she's the I most delightful either. person I've ever met. <laughs> she is she's just so she's such a sweetheart i'm gonna get up like all about yeah. her now <laughs> yeah no i'll do i'll all with you too <laughs> and the fact that she accepted i was i was i was nervous about asking her because i'm like oh my god does she want to come to la and judge for la you know eh. but no she was like within two minutes of me sending the message it was literally like yes you know in 10 exclamation points kind of situation that's and awesome. um, she's such a sweetheart. We've we've had opportunities to um, chill out and and hang out at you know during competition weekends. I won't say at the competition because that's nearly impossible. Yeah, um, to chill and hang out because so much is going on and it's between like trying to say hi to people you haven't seen in forever, but at the same time keep your eye on the stage so you can cheer all your friends. You know. Yep. Yep. And uh, it's a little mentally exhausting after all that, but um, yeah, I, I was so honored that. She agreed to do it, and I can't wait to get her here and show her L.A. shenanigans because we party. We have a good time, and, uh, you know, I don't know. She's going to be here with family, so she'll be fine. Yeah. No, I know, and I know she loves her beard family, too, so it's just – and it, to meet her was like – it was a ray of sunshine. She is just – yeah. So – but but going with the sentiment of, like, you know, feeling – like an outcast for so long and not being around anyone that, that fits what you feel you are. And then all of a sudden you get introduced to this whole new thing with all these people who are exactly like you and who accept you and love you mm -hmm. and want to be with you. I mean, just to, just to hear her talk about that is, it's just such a touching story. Yeah. I feel like, um, it really is like in this community for her. I, I don't know. I feel like this is like the one place that she can go and people aren't asking her about her facial hair or whatever. And it's more like, Oh, Hey, what's going on? All right, let's go have a beer. Yeah. All right, cool. Yep. Yeah. It's, you know, how's it's, life? What's up? <laughs> you know, yeah, she doesn't have to um, think about how she looks. She just has to be herself. You know, yep. there's no explanations. Everyone just, and that's, but that's the way the whole scene is. I, to me, in my opinion is a lot of it's that way where it's, you're you're used to dealing like like you say you go you're out and about and people are like yelling across the street at you making a spectacle of you and you know for some of us it's uncomfortable but you know you go to these things and it's like everyone's equal everyone's you know you don't yell across the room hey nice beard you know it's just everyone accepts everyone it's like this is just who we are these are the people we are and it's just hey we're all friends that all do the same thing which is really cool. Exactly. And I will say like, that's one of my favorite things about, um, and I guess I can appreciate, not, I guess, I know I can appreciate on a much, much, much smaller scale, um, to what Rose is feeling when she comes to hang uh, with everybody at competitions, because, um, I like blending in with, you know, a group of five or 10 of my friends, if we're out in public and hanging out, cause, um, I'm not the, I'm not singled out. You know what I mean? 
And if I am, the way that I handle it is, oh, thanks. That was really nice for you to say that about my beard. By the way, look at my friends. Check those guys out. Yeah. And then I turn my back and I walk to the bar and go get another beer while everybody else deals with that attention. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I'm ungrateful for the attention and for the validation of being a human being. You know, I really, really do appreciate all of that. Um, but sometimes it's a little like, Oh my God, why are you staring? This is just normal to me, you know? Yep. Yep. But, uh, anyway, so, um, that's, that's what I love about the bearding communities. I can, I get folded into the fold, if you will. And I kind of get lost amongst, among the masses of other bigger, uh, more impressive beards. And I can just, be i can just chill i can you know burp fart eat drink whatever nobody cares you know it's just oh that's nate anyway all right so this thing is happening over here let's all go do this you know move along this isn't the nate you're looking for yes exactly (laughs) all right (laughs) but i don't want it to sound like i'm ungrateful when people approach me and stuff i mean it, it it there is a certain like you know thank you for acknowledging that i exist on this earth thank you high fives all of that Um, but at the same time, for somebody that's a natural introvert, it can be a little overwhelming. I've learned to deal with it over the years and, and, um, I can, you know, actually make eye contact with strangers now instead of like looking down going, Oh, thanks. And then turning away, you know, it literally used to be that bad. Yeah. So let's talk about, okay. So we talked about Taylor's another one of your judge judges. He's from the Austin Mm -hmm. facial hair club, uh, vice president, I believe. And, uh, yes. so, uh, what, what else do we know about Taylor other than he travels a lot and is a handsome fella? Um, I don't know. Taylor, he, he ha- he's really smart, first of all. And, um, he's very well traveled, obviously. Uh, I don't know. I think he's, he's got a really, really good heart and, and, and he's in the beard stuff for the right reason. And that I appreciate because you will meet people that are here for the attention specifically and, they don't want to participate with charity stuff. They don't want to help run things. They just want to show up and get their attention, win their trophy, and walk away. And uh, Taylor is not like that. And I, I have to say that that's one of the things that I, I definitely appreciate about him. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Who else? Who else? Who else do we have as a judge? Uh, we've got Greg Schoenwolf coming from Utah. He is a freestyler extraordinaire. And uh, he's pretty amazing as well. And he's also also a really kind guy. Um, Mark McShane is coming as well, who normally does Whaler, but he has switched to uh, Mustache Ooh. recently. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a bit of a, a handlebar mustache going on. And um, But, you know, he can grow a beard in like three days. So <laughs> yeah. I hate those people. I don't hate them. They're wonderful. But I'm just like, damn it. You're so brave to like completely change your style because you know in three days you're just going to go yeah, like a Jiffy Pop you know, uh, thing and you're going to have your beard all over again. Um, and then who else? Oh, we have James McMahon coming as well from uh, Minnesota. So uh, he's part of the Remington Beard Boss guys and he also does amazing freestyle. He actually won our first freestyle here um, in 2016. We had our Mad Max uh, thing, and he came as the guy that plays guitar with the flames going up behind him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in the new Mad Max movie. And he freestyled his beard into the guitar. How awesome is that? Wow. Yeah, it was really cool. So, um, yeah, he won um, for his category for that. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. All right, so we have got five judges for this event. Now, tell me about a little bit about the categories. Do you guys have any kind of, like, <clears throat> as you do your themes every year, do you guys have any type of, like, themed categories or anything for the event? Uh, no, uh, we don't. We have a basic 10 all right. uh, categories, and, you know, we go from uh, all the way from natural mustache to full beard over a foot. And uh, usually since... Um, Freestyle is a bit of a showstopper. We do freestyle last, freestyle beards. And I know that pisses the freestylers off because they have to maintain all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for them. But but 
they actually get to walk around and hang out with people when everybody else doesn't necessarily. Yeah. Um, they can't drink or eat basically, but whatever, they'll get over it. <laughs> uh, no, I, I make that joke because several freestylers are uh, some of my closest friends and that's, that's one of their gripes. You know, they're like, Oh, freestyles always at the end of the day. I'm like, but yeah, you guys are the crazy styles and you're the showstopper. You're the one that, you know, that that's, that's the, the big category because that's the weirder category, if you will. And, um, <clears throat> or the more spectacle category, I should say. Um, How so yeah, uh, we'll have 10, I believe actually, um, we're going to merge uh, partial freestyle in with the regular freestylers as well. So it'll all be together. All right. Uh, just to have a bit of a beefier category and, you know, a bit of a more judging fight. Why not? Let's yeah. have some drama. I've always kind of wondered why they didn't lump the two together. Like to me, it felt like why not just put all freestyle together? In my opinion. Yeah, I, I kind of understand it. Like I understand why freestyle mustache is not with everything else. Cause I mean, it's just specific and so tiny on your face, but I, I could see partial and full beard freestyle, excuse me, going together because, um, you have long hair to mess with all the way around and you create whatever you create, create out of it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I mean, I've seen guys but, who've had uh, partial beards who could make a bigger freestyle, like a, a more massive freestyle beard than a guy who has a full beard that does, you know, it, there's mm -hmm. more girth to it sometimes. I've seen that. I have seen that. Do you guys um, know what, what kind of uh, uh, Whiskerina categories are you guys having? Oh, we are definitely having a Whiskerina category. That's also one of our more popular categories as well. And the ladies really, really get into it. They deliver every year. I know. That's my favorite uh, category. It's a lot of fun to see what they come up with. You know, it really is. I wish that I could see them on stage for the first time instead of walking around, uh, you know, talking to people or backstage. Cause I'm like, Oh, you know, I see that. That's cool. Like I, I, I would love to have the boom, there's this boom, there's that, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. The surprise as they, of it. as they come out. So what the surprise of it, like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause I mean, I feel like with risk arena, a lot of it is, Ooh, ah, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Cause, I mean, some of these ladies get insanely creative with it. I've seen dioramas, uh, you know, made into mustaches and, um, what else have I seen? Uh, oh my God. Like it's everything. I, I've seen, you know, uh, carnival stuff done, like the, the punching, knocking down, uh, clowns and stuff like you throw balls at them. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that was turned into a beard one year and, you know, just really cool stuff like that. Now, so, uh, I'm oh, really oh. excited. We should have a pretty decent sized arenas category this year. So that's really cool. Like I said, that's my favorite one. Like that to me is like what I wait for. And, and actually, I mean, I know your, your events a little bit for the older crowd, so you don't have a children's category or anything, but no, I don't. like, I like those too. Cause the event that I did yesterday, there was uh six or seven kids who had some really great beards. And it's just like, it's like getting that extra whiskerina category, but then having the kids up there <laughs> like, and getting their feet wet in the whole scene. And that to me is like, you know, any way we can like make the community bigger and make more people involved because of course, you know, everyone's got families and wives are interested, kids are interested. And it definitely not only you're making, you're, you're becoming part of a big family, but it also brings your tight knit, close personal family together when you guys all do it together. And I think that's right. really it, cool too. It really does. Uh, I have to say that's one of the things I like about the Utah competition is uh, they have a kids category as well. And um, they even have like an arts and crafts station so that the kids can make their beards if they didn't know about it and they just showed up. Oh, you know, that's neat. That's a cool, cool. It's idea. really cool. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. I mean, I guess cause a lot of them, you know, their, their, their moms and dads help them build them beforehand. So, but I mean, if they had mm -hmm. the ability to make something, if they, you know, someone brought their kid and they didn't know to be able to, you know, really quickly make something, you know, that's, that's a really cool idea. Really cool idea. Mm -hmm. Now tell me a little great. bit about where, where the events at, like, give me all the details. All right. Well, this year the event is over in the Highland Park area of Los Angeles. Um, I would 
hesitate to call it a hipster area, but it kind of is. They've got vintage record shops over there, tattoo shops, and some great uh, craft brewery uh, breweries and bars, as well as you know, uh, ramen places, of course, because that's the big thing out here in LA now is to have like real ramen, not you know. Not, not the college dime ramen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Top, top ramen. Um, yeah. But, um, so it's at a place called the Hi Hat, which is an amazing, an amazing venue. I, I really like it. I've been to several shows out there. Actually, I went to, uh, Brian Nelson from, uh, the Austin Facial Hair Club comes out here once a year after doing the South by Southwest. He takes, several Japanese bands uh, on tour and LA is one of the, the stops. And for the past couple of years, it's been at the hi hat and I really liked the venue a lot. Oh, they also have a built in uh, burger joint, which is great. Oh, great. I know. Right. <laughs> so they got a built in burger joint and well, actually in the mornings they serve bagels and then uh, at a later time it's burgers. So, um, but anyway, so it's going to be there, and and I'm pretty excited about it. So uh, I like that. What I like mainly about the venue is it's one giant room. So wherever you are, and with no obstruction, wherever you are in the in the bar or in the venue, you can see what's going on on stage and uh-huh. you can hear. Because there's a lot of venues where the way that it's set up, you know, you end up getting in a corner and you can't quite see or quite hear, or there's giant, you know, pillars in the way and stuff like that. But this is just wherever you are socializing or, you know, um, buying stuff from vendors or whatever, you can see everything going on. Yeah. That's, that's always a plus about a venue is being able to like, you know, always be engaged with the event at all times, Mm -hmm. you know, it makes, makes for a successful event, you know, And so how's your, how's your usual turnout? I mean, do you guys get, get a quite a bit of, you know, turnout or do you guys get like a lot of walk up from like just random people who might happen to see you guys on the news in the morning or walking around and they see this extravaganza going on and want to check it out? I mean, well, we usually do, um, get walk ups day of show. Um, But to be honest, uh, every year we have sold out and we've literally turned 50 plus people away at the door saying, I'm so sorry, we're sold out. That is sexy. That is awesome. It's it's amazing. I'm 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 still shocked that people show up to stuff, you know, like I'm like, oh, my God, okay, I'm throwing this event. Wow. People want to come to this event. All right, cool. Um, And I don't mean that in any sort of derogatory way towards myself, my club or Uh, the community, but I'm just always surprised when, um, new people are like, yeah, oh my God, like, this is crazy. This is awesome. I really love what's going on. Well, and you're in in a city where literally there's like a billion things to do and to get people to choose to do that is, you know, pretty amazing too. It is. I will say that is my big stressor every year is, uh, I know that, um, I'm fighting with the city of Los Angeles and everything else that's going on that particular weekend yeah. and to try and convince people to come to our little beard show. Um, it, it's, I'm humbled when they show up, you know, I'm like, Oh my God, you could be doing so many other things. Um, <clears throat> in Los Angeles. So actually I haven't looked at the calendar to see what's going on that particular night. Cause I don't want to know. And I think the world series <laughs> or something. I don't know. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Sports. Um, Cause I happening. have hopes that, you know, tickets will sell. Um, and it's really frustrating. You know, again, LA is just such a weird market. Um, you know, tickets don't really sell until the last minute. Like uh, I will say our promotional campaign is working really well right now because we've sold several tickets where I don't rec- I see the ticket sales come in and the name and who bought them. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't, there's a lot of names I don't recognize. Like I'm hitting my team up going, Hey, do you know so-and-so? And they're like, no, I've never heard of that person. I'm like, Oh my God, wow, this might be something new. This is great. Um, I'm actually going to make a post tomorrow, uh, to the beard community going, look, you know, I've seen a lot of people we don't know buying tickets. Hold on. Sorry. That's all right. Um, You're, you're just a very popular guy. All right. Well, (laughs) it's, you know, beard competition season right now for us. So all sorts of things are coming in and like, what do you think about this, Nate? Or, you know, 
um, this happened and so and so can't vend anymore or what you know all yeah. sorts of little fighters. Um, what was I, dude? I forgot. <laughs> uh, geez, I was listening too, and then I. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. So I want to make a post tomorrow, uh, telling you know basically the bearded friends of ours that look, you know, a bunch of people we don't know are buying tickets and this may sell out quicker than we assumed it will, or it usually does. So if you plan on coming, please don't wait till the last minute and please don't wait till you get to the door. Cause I yeah. can't do anything if we are at capacity. Absolutely. Yeah. So just make so sure I, everyone I ba- basically I'm like friends. I want you guys to come first before new people, which is terrible, but I want to see everybody, you know, so if this episode does come out right before the event and they by some chance listen to this and they want to go to the event, where do they go to get tickets? They can go. Uh, there's a couple places. They can go to, uh, first of all, um, beardbattlela.com. So just type in beardbattlela and the ticket link will come right up immediately. And then uh, you can also go through the Hi Hat venue um, website, and that will also take you to the Beard Battle LA thing. If you want to see um, what other you know uh, events are happening at the Hi Hat or whatever, that's all there as well. But um, we are on their calendar with our artwork and our um, you know website and everything. So yeah, you can get it through both places. And I will also put links in the show notes too, and it'll be in the Thank blog you. blog post of thebeardcaster.com slash blog slash 73, because this will be episode 73. You just go there. Awesome. There'll be all the show notes to everything that's going on. There'll be links to the website, link, links to all the judges, links to the charity, all that stuff. So if you're interested in more information about any of that stuff, you can go there. And there'll also be a link to their website and to the hi hat. So if you want to get your tickets there, you can do that. What else? What else do we got going on? Hmm. I don't know. I have to work tomorrow. That's uh, what I'm doing. I know I hear you. That really <laughs> sucks. Um I know what no, we could, okay. I know what we could pimp right now. What's up? I got I know someone who's got a really super awesome coupon code for twenty percent off some really great beard oil. Ah, right on. That's exactly it. My um, beard oil sponsor is uh, Pulpo, P-U-L-P-O, Beard Oils. And uh, they're my my personal um, sponsor. I'm an ambassador for them. And and uh, the reason I got asked by them and the reason I said yes is because uh, I really do believe in his products. Um, I Because I have a bigger beard. I need a lot of saturation yeah. and a lot of beard oils are really, really thin, like almost water thin and they don't saturate. They give a nice smell, but they don't, um, give me the, you know, protect protection from the environment and sun and things that my beard needs. And his actually does. Um, he, he's made some, uh, several thick formulas and he's got some really really good scents i will say red alert is my favorite yes i absolutely agree i think the of the, of all the pulpo beard oils the red alert is absolutely one of my he's got his scents are just, oh good so you know it then that's awesome oh, yeah, yeah no i've and known one, I, yeah i've so known great. i've known jorge for like years now and like him and i've like talked i've done an interview with him we've hung out at events and stuff and like I, I got some of his stuff like before he released it, and I think Red Alert might have been one of his new ones when it was coming out, and like I was just like floored by it. Like he, he has some really interesting scents, and yeah, Pulpo is like one of my favorite like oil companies out there. So, and when I found out that you were you know working with them, I was like super. I just remember texting him that night, and I was like, dude, you Nate's working with you now. I'm like so excited. <laughs> So yeah, That's I was really, like, I was like super pumped. <laughs> it's funny. Like, uh, he's, uh, um, you know, he'll send me the scents and stuff and, um, and there's several other ones that I like, actually, there's not a single one that I'm just like, Ugh, I can't wear that. It's just gross or whatever. Um, but I keep using my red alert. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, the Miami nights is cool and the cooler is awesome. But, um, do you have any more red alert boss? Yeah. Cause <laughs> I think, I think he's like a mint one that I really like too. I can't remember what that one's called. I like called. that one too. You know what? I'm going to go look in my cabinet. 
Um, I think it's called, what is it? Four Horsemen. Um, yes. I knew, I actually, if I turned around, I could probably see it because I got all the bottles behind me too. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where mine are, mine are in, the, in the bathroom. Actually, I unpacked yeah. them all yesterday and, uh, and put them in the bathroom cabinet. My new roommate was like, Nate, um, dude, <laughs> I think you might have a problem. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> No, I have the problem because I get so many, like I get, in fact, yesterday I got a ton of like oils from uh, this new company called uh, Duck River Beard Company. Mm-hmm. And uh, t- I, I won a bunch of products from them at our competition that we did like a, uh, about three weeks ago. And then yesterday I emceed an event and one of the gifts that the the host gave me was this huge box of duck river beard company oils and balms and all this stuff. And I'm like, Oh my God. And on top of that, I like, I still have a ton of shit that I won when we were at worlds in the bag from there. I got, I got so much stuff. It's ridiculous. So it's like, I can't get yeah, through it fast I enough. Started, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, those grocery, uh, reusable grocery bags, you know? Yeah. They're made out of fabric or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have two of those that are full of oils and balms that I have collected from or been given or won from uh, beer competitions and stuff. And and I do try out different stuff uh, every now and then just to see what it's about. But, um, you know, my heart is with Pupa. Yeah. Uh, I, not just because um, he's my sponsor, but because I literally believe in that product. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I absolutely am on board with you and that decision too. And 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 the other thing too is like I'm in these two huge bags of stuff you got. The stuff doesn't doesn't have a great shelf life either. It's way better if you use it when it's fresh and yep. It'll I mean, so that's the other thing is like when you like guys like us who accumulate a lot of stuff, it's like you got to use it like quicker. It's going to go yeah, bad. Yeah, and it's and it's hard to um I've started taking, you know, small bags to meetings. And to um, my club meetings here in LA and going, okay, take what you want, try stuff out. Yeah. Maybe you guys can bring stuff and try, you know, I feel, I feel like we end up becoming, you know, almost like a lady's makeup party or something. Where it's like, Ooh, what is that? Well, oh, that smells really good. In, oh, you should try this. You know? In fact, when I interviewed Jorge, he was talking about how he, he had whatever formula that he had used, um, it had a really long shelf life because he had, I think the first bottle he had ever made, he sealed it up and he put it on his shelf and he left it there. And he's like, mm-hmm. you know, it was, you know, temperature difference, sunlight, you know, this and that. And he cracked it open a year later and it still was like, like it was the day he put it in there. So, wow. yeah. So, I mean, it, he does make super high quality stuff and he's got some really cool, I, the other cool thing I like about the company is their the, my my Pulpo Beard Oil sweatshirt, man. God. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that design, dude. And and that's how that specific sweatshirt made a lot of new friends with me. That's how I met Crystal Davis was because of my sweatshirt. I'm like, you know, she's like, oh, you know that company, and I'm like, yeah. And so then her and I started talking, and now we're like BFFs, and she just annoys me all the time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh, I love seeing um, her but too. There are actually a lot of um, good, you know, product companies out there as well. So, um, yeah, there are tons. I mean, that's the hard thing too. Is there's so many companies out there, like trying to find the right the right thing that works for you and the and the best thing. I mean, and we're also their target market. So of course, you know, they throw everything at us, going, "Try this, try this." Yeah. But yeah. uh, I have to say one of my other favorite companies who actually happens to be our title sponsor for a competition is Grave Before Shave. Oh, cool. Let me tell you. those. I'm sorry? No, cool. Go ahead. Talk. Talk. Oh, yeah. They are great. And those guys have, let me tell you, beard wash on lockdown. It's just, oh. they've got a lot of really good stuff. they got good bombs and stuff too. Like, don't get me wrong, but um, I, I really like their products as well. And uh, like I said, they have a really, really solid beard wash and stuff too. Yeah. So um, I was really proud when they came on. Like that was one of those, like, you know, we sent out our uh, promo packet or our sponsorship packet, like looking for sponsors for this competition. Yeah. And they responded immediately. And I was just literally like, no way, you know, because yeah. they're just, they're great. So uh, and they, and have- I know that they have a solid name through the community as well. And, and that was, um, 
I don't know. That's important to me that if we're going to work with you, you, you should have a good reputation. And they definitely do. Oh, so. They do. I remember seeing them at Worlds, but they have like an insane amount of products, like all the different oils they have, T-shirts, mm-hmm. just they got tons of really, really cool designs. I mean, they obviously... I love their logos, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the cool thing about them is like you can see a bottle of their stuff and you might not be able to read the label, but you know it's one of their products. I mean, they got... Yeah. They put a lot of time in their design of their products, which is really they cool. Do. And I will tell you what, they came out with a line of socks a couple years ago. Still my favorite pair of socks. So oh. They're thick. <laughs> they are awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. So, yeah, and uh, I will say like Wayne and his team, Wayne Bailey and his team, just they're really, really good people. So um, I'm really looking forward to uh, not just working with them next weekend, but having a couple beers and kicking back and just, hey, man, catching up, you know, what's yeah. going on? Yeah. You. Very cool. So, but if you're interested in checking out uh, getting the red alert from Pulpal Beard Oil, if you go to pulpalbeardoils.com and enter promo code CHOPS, C-H-O-P-Z, Right, you get twenty yes, percent off. Sir. So let's let's yes, get let's get the people trying the Red Alert. Get out there and try the Red Alert because it's a really good right. oil. Both Nate and I swear behind it. I, I stand <laughs> behind the bottle and I go, "Shit, asshole." Yeah, I will say there's not been a single person that I've shown that scent to that's been like, "Ooh, that's terrible," or "Oh, that's too strong." It's literally like, "Oh, what is that?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely yeah, definitely go to pulpobeardoil.com and check it out. Enter the promo code Chops to get your twenty percent off. I don't really pimp too much product. I used to back in the day, but the, it's just it's I like to work with companies that I like the person that runs it like i like to have that relationship with them and like the friendship and then like i've talked to him so much and i just enjoy his company talking to him and stuff like that and it really it really makes for me to be able to talk about a product you know even if i like it a lot but just to talk about how great the person is behind it is Mm -hmm. that makes the biggest difference to me so that's why you know it is a huge difference but of course like you're saying with the uh grave before you shave guys i mean they're cool guys too and i've met tons of great guys that own companies and too but you know there's just certain people that just stick out to you as being extraordinary and, and amazing that you gravitate towards and those are the people you kind of help out a little bit more so that's why Mm -hmm. that's where my 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 heart lies with pulpal beard oils is you know the great great product but great people making it too absolutely i'm i'm really proud to be part of that team and like i still you know i'm like oh my god i get to like be part of these dudes all right well okay that's great you know (laughs) so uh, a part of me is still like i can't believe they you know, want to chill with me. Yeah. So I think it's awesome. All right, Nate, let's wrap this up. So let's talk yes, about, let's, uh, um, what, what do you, what do you want to pimp? Let's talk about your social media or all that stuff. Give us, give us <clears throat> where we can find you. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at, uh, my handle is prime Nate P R I M E N A T E as in primate, but, with Nate. <laughs> I get that. Fi- I finally got that right now. <laughs> Boy, am I an idiot. <laughs> um, it's actually a, a bit of a double reference. Um, I got that handle when I was working on the Transformers cartoon and Optimus Prime is uh, right up there with Mr. T for me. If oh, you will. yeah. Um, and so I did Prime Nate as part uh, homage to that. But also, again, because I'm a bit of a hairy beast primate <laughs> you know oh. it just made sense okay so uh, yeah you can find me at ig at primenate.com i mean dot com did i just dot com you um <laughs> at. also uh, our twitter is beards of la for twitter and then you can just find me under nate johnson on facebook on the facebook as grandpas call it the yeah, facebook the facebook that's what i call it yeah <laughs> but i tell you what though the facebook is uh Still uh, plowing away is the best medium for what we do. I mean, the clubs and stuff like that. I really, I really, really is. And I don't know why. Like, I don't know why that that is like the like preferred method of everyone that's in like the bearding. Why is it? Why is Facebook like that thing? I think because it's so centralized with everything with as far as, um, you know, 
dumbass statements you want to make because we all do. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, crazy photos that we take, uh, not only of ourselves, uh, but with our, you know, crazy bearded family. And when I say crazy, I mean that with love. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We should bring MySpace back. <laughs> <laughs> we could do it single handed. We'll just make it like just for bearding people. But I'm pretty sure I still have an account, but I really have no idea. Do all right. Here's a fun one for you later. Go just go to myspace.com and then do like a uh, if you can you type your name in you you should be able to pull your page up from when you last had it. Oh god, it's still there. I've done it before just to kind of see like what because I've like hunted for pictures that I've lost in the past and I'm like. I remember it being uh, on my MySpace page, and I've been actually able to recover stuff from back then through my MySpace my ugh, MySpace page. Hmm. So yeah, so yeah, if, I'll have to do that. I'll play that game later. <laughs> yeah. So all right, Nate. Well, I totally, totally appreciate you taking the time uh, out hanging out with us and talking about the uh, Beard Battle Los Angeles three and and getting to know you better. I mean, I feel like. I'm in love with you now, man. So oh, thanks, brother. <laughs> but I, I had a really, really good time today. And, and uh, again, uh, you know, it's funny. Like I was sitting here thinking, like, well, I know we're talking about a podcast thing and talking on a podcast thing right now, and it's business. But I hope I can talk to Scott any other time. You know, like that's what's going through my head. I'm like, we're buddies. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Do, I'm always up to chit chatting, and and I can't wait to run into you again. So I really hope that. I really hope that things work out for you to be in uh, Richmond for nationals. And if that does happen, we're going to do a round table and we'll have to set, we'll set aside some time. If we could do it over breakfast on Saturday morning, if you're coming in late Friday. So sounds awesome. But uh, until, until we get to meet again, thank you so much for taking this time out. Thank you for making this happen. And I wish you the best of luck with this event and everything that you do in the future, sir. Thank you, sir. Again, it was an honor to uh, to be asked to talk. I'm literally like going, okay, well, that's what all we wanted to do was talk. Cool. Yeah, but Anytime. it's not going to be as cool as the interview you do later this week. Oh, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I can't, again, <laughs> let you like, dude, you just made my heart skip a little bit. I'm like, <gasps> going to be on K-Rock. That's so I cool. I know. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. All right, Nate, Thank until until we talk again, take it easy and we'll talk to you later. All right, brother. You take care. And thank you so much, Nate. You are so awesome. Thank you for taking the time out to talk about this awesome competition. I wish I was going. I hope someday I can. And I wish you the best of luck with this comp. And I hope that you guys raise a lot of money and a lot of canned food for the Los Angeles Food Bank. You guys are so awesome. And I greatly appreciate what you do for your community. And keep up the good work. And I hope this this comp was a success and I hope it is a success and I hope you guys continue doing this for many, many more years. So thank you once again, Nate. Uh, You can check out all of this stuff. Like I said, I'll put links to all of the stuff we talked about in the show notes. So if by some chance you happen to be listening to this on a, like a podcatcher, like through uh, Apple podcasts or Google podcasts or Spotify, in the show notes right there, there'll be links to all the different things that we talked about. Uh, so you can just click right on them. So if you buy, if you want to buy tickets to the event, there'll be a link to the hi-hat there. So you can get them right there, right then and there. If not, you can go to thebeardcaster.com slash blog slash 73. And that's the blog post for this episode. And they will also be links in there for all the stuff that we talked about. Don't forget... If you want to enter to win one of these cool prize packs that I'm giving away next episode, go to thebeardcaster.com slash win to enter now. So I guess that's about it for today. Thank you again, Nate. Thank you to everyone that listened. Oh, and don't forget to go to popobeardoils.com, enter promo code CHOPS, C-H-O-P-Z, for 20% off your order. That's Nate's special promo code for Popo Beard Oils. Like we talked in this episode, we both love them and you should try them out because we know you would love them too. So on that note, go out and check out all that stuff. I know I gave you a laundry list of things to do, but you know, hey, if you don't feel like doing any of that stuff, that's cool, man. I'm just, you know, this just what I do. It's all part of the podcast. It's all the things that I do. But uh, 
I guess until next week, I hope you all have a good time doing whatever you're doing. Uh, Hug your friends, be a good person, do good things, and just live a good life. So until next time, I'll talk to you and ciao. Doctor says you're cured, but you still feel the pain. Aspirations in the clouds, but your arms go down the drain, and you want her, and she wants you. We want everyone, and you want her, and she wants you. Yes.